Hey, good morning. It's great to, uh, to be here. You know, I've never had to give a, uh, a farewell sermon before. I think the closest thing I ever got was my eighth grade promotion speech. I gave a little speech at eighth grade graduation, but uh, at the end of that, we all got uh, diplomas and ice cream. And I'm so sorry, but we couldn't do diplomas and ice cream for everybody here. I'm sorry about it. I really wanted cupcakes, but hey, that's okay. Um, Hey, you know, I just want to give some context here. Um, just, hey, if you're here for the very first time uh, this morning, I, I believe God has a word for you from Acts chapter 2 is where we're going to be this morning. Um, but also, if you've been here a while, you know uh, Morgan and I are sensing a transition in our hearts. Um, and I just want to kind of explain and give a little context there. But hopefully, even in doing that, um, how many know the stories of what God does can encourage our hearts? And when you hear the story of what God does and someone else, it can even encourage you and you can maybe even sense how God might be speaking to you and leading you um, in this particular season. So uh, Morgan and I sense sort of a transition in our hearts probably for a while. We didn't think it would end with us uh, actually transitioning to another location. Um, but then it was a few weeks ago. Uh, we just had God show up in our hearts and in our lives. Has anyone ever had a moment before where it's like a suddenly of God, God just shows up and he speaks. And we were having a conversation and we just sensed in our hearts, we're like, I think... <laughs> We're supposed to go to Atlanta. Isn't that crazy? We're like, yeah, that's crazy. Let's just sit with it um, for a couple days. And then I came uh, on Sunday morning. Uh, it was actually our first Sunday on the lawn. How many of you were here our first Sunday um, on the lawn? You were here rocking. I was here. I opened up worship. Uh, and I walked to the back of the lawn, probably right around back there. And the, the Lord's presence just came on me, and I began to weep, uh, sensing the Lord transition Morgan and my hearts to our next. And as I'm weeping, uh, Kathy Gove, an amazing spiritual mom of this house. How many of you love Kathy Gove? You know and love her. She, um, she actually texts Morgan and I and says she's been praying for us all week, and I'm weeping. Um, and so if I don't cry today, by the way, it's because I already did all of my crying. Like I'm trying. Is anyone else a one and done crier? It's like you just cry once and then that's it. Okay. All right. Where where are the um are there, where are the leakers at? Where it's like you just slowly leak out tears over a minute. Okay. Is there anyone here that maybe you've uh, kind of repressed your emotions a little bit and you don't cry and maybe you need some counseling for that? Okay. Thank you for your honesty. I cried, I cried. So if I don't cry today, I promise I did. And as I'm crying, I'm weeping on my knees over there. Kathy Gove texts Morgan and I, and she says, I've been praying for you guys all week. Um, and I feel like the Lord is speaking a transition. There's a sense of finality. Your season is over. It's time to go, go, go. How many of you can sense God move in like a dramatic, like what the heck? And so that happens and I don't even need it. I'm like crying. I'm like, I know, I know that's what God's saying. I don't need this text, but thank you. Crying. And then, uh, and then after church is over, I go to um, Alex Martinez. Where's Alex? How many of you love Alex Martinez? Okay. So Alex and Kirsten grab Morgan and I. Um, and, and we just already felt God speak to our hearts and, and he pulls us aside. He'd been on vacation and he didn't know what we were praying, what we were processing. And he said, hey, this is really weird. Um, but I just have been praying for you and I keep seeing Atlanta. And I feel like the Lord's saying there's grace for you in Atlanta. So if anyone is mad about us leaving or sad, it is all due to Kathy and Alex. You can blame them. Um, if they hadn't shared those things, we'd, we'd still be here. So. But hey, we've, uh, we, I've been thinking a lot in this season about uh, Abraham and how God uh, said to Abram, go, leave your father's house and go into the land that I'm going to show you. Uh, and I feel grateful to the Lord that he's at least given us a direction. But how many, how many of you guys know sometimes God calls us to go before we even know where we're supposed to go. We're just called to step out of the boat and see if he meets us there. I mean, even the disciples, when Jesus came to say, follow me, they were in boats with their father, with their family, and with their nets, with their profession. Before they even know where Jesus is taking them, they leave their fathers, they leave their jobs to step out. How many of you know the promises of God are always outside of our comfort zones? Some of you are like, yes. And some of you are like, man, I wish the promises of God were just me in a beach chair, people bringing me grapes and 
fruit, I don't know what you drink on a beach, obviously not alcohol, probably just water, people just bringing you stuff on the beach chair, like the promises of God just comes, you know, the promises of God always require us to step out of the boat and into faith. So that's what I want to do this morning. I want to, I want to do two things this morning. Number one is hopefully encourage you from Acts chapter 2, um, which I, I feel like I want to preach on just because I've preached on it so many times here at The Rock. It's such a part of this story. I want to honor that. Um, so I, I want to preach on Acts 2 and hopefully encourage and empower you to step out of a comfort zone this week. How does that sound? Um, but number two thing I want to do is get you out of here by 10 a.m. or whenever you start to tan a little bit but not burn, whatever comes first. Does that sound like a plan? Okay, let me read Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, and I'm going to pray for us. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly, someone say suddenly, from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Lord, we thank you this morning. We give you glory and honor. We say that you are still the God that suddenly rushes in like wind that comes on a still day out of nowhere to blow us away. God, we pray that you would blow us away this morning, captivate us with your love, and give us the strength and grace to step out of a comfort zone this week. In the name of Jesus, everybody said... Amen. So in this story, the Holy Spirit comes. He fills all the people. You need to understand, though, is they were in a room praying together. So they're praying together. The Holy Spirit comes, gives them faith to step out of the prayer room and into the streets to proclaim the good news of Jesus. This is, might be a challenging word for some of you, but the first comfort zone we have to step out of is the comfort zone of prayer. And here's what I mean by that. I mean by that is that prayer only works if we're willing to do what God asks us to do. How many of you know the Christian life is not one of waiting and of sitting on the sidelines, but James 1 says it's a life of hearing God's word and obeying it. And so I think what, what's that, and what one thing I've learned at The Rock that I've learned from Acts chapter 2 that I love about this community is that we believe that the Holy Spirit is alive and he's not just alive, he's actually involved in our lives. And uh, I came from a church, I got saved in a Presbyterian church, which I learned many things from. I learned a love for scripture, but there's a, a joke about Presbyterians and I can hopefully say that because I used to be one. Maybe this is cheating a little bit. I don't know, but they call them the frozen chosen because uh, they, anyways, it's too complicated to explain, but frozen chosen. But I came to the rock and all of a sudden I'm like, man, people are lifting their hands in worship. Like, that's kind of cool. Like, Woo, I, I can move. And, uh, and, and all of a sudden, I'm meeting these people that are like actually believing that the Holy Spirit is going to speak to them on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Like, like, like he's actually involved in our lives. And that's what I love. And I think there's a, a, a heritage here of the activity of the Holy Spirit uh, birthed in Acts chapter 2 where he's involved in our lives. Um, but the uncomfortable thing about the Holy Spirit is usually... He's, he's trying to change our lives. Does that make sense? He's not coming to you saying, hey, you are, you stay just the way you are. Actually, he comes to us and says, hey, there's more that I have for you. There's a promise of God that I have for you, but you have to be willing to step out of the place of prayer and into action to do what I'm asking you to do. And the Christian life, I think, has lived kind of in this tension between uh, sort of waiting for God and then God suddenly comes to speak. And here's what I felt this morning is I felt like there's some people out here where you've been waiting for God to speak. You've been in a season of waiting for clarity. Is that speaking to anyone? You've been waiting for a breakthrough. You don't know what God's going to say. I just want to pray this morning for a suddenly of God to break in and speak to you. So that's comfort zone number one. Comfort zone number two, uh, the Holy Spirit's poured out. It says all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages. Someone say languages as the Spirit gave them ability. And then the writer of Acts goes ahead and he lists 19 different types of people groups that are either encountered by the Holy Spirit or whose language is heard. Uh, 
Here's what I want to say about that. So many different people, people of different languages, people of different ethnicities, people of different national origins, probably people of different uh, ideologies and philosophies and political leanings and all of these different things. The Holy Spirit isn't just poured out on one type of person. It's poured out on all tongues, all tribes. The kingdom of God is always about every nation. All different types of people. And, and you can see that even in the story of Abraham, where God says to Abraham, I'm going to bless you. And in you, all families of the earth are going to be blessed. And then at the end of time, Revelation, where this is all going, is we're going to be standing on a sea of glass, gazing at Jesus on his throne. And Revelation 7, 9 says that there's going to be people there from Every nation, every tribe, every single tongue. How many of you know when you're in heaven, the people standing on the left and the right of you might not look and think like you? They might be a little bit different. And so we as a kingdom people are learning that the Holy Spirit uh, invites all people uh, to the table. And, here, and here, here's the second comfort zone that we need to step out of. Are you ready for it? It's the comfort zone of people, the people that we like, the people that are comfortable. How many of you know that when God calls us somewhere, sometimes it's to actually love not just people that make us uncomfortable, but maybe even our enemies. Have you ever heard that before? Someone said that, love your enemies. I think it was Pastor Bob. And so we need to step out. And here's one thing I learned at the rock, because that's kind of a macro level, is the Holy Spirit washes away every line of, of nationality and political leaning and, and color and race and ethnicity. And if you say yes to Jesus, everyone gets a seat at the table. And we're called to be a kingdom people. That's kind of a macro level, but a micro level that have space at our table for people who may think differently than us. We're called to be a people of open hearts and, and open arms that, like Jesus, say, come as you are. Maybe not stay as you are. Maybe once you get to the table, we're going to work on some stuff. But we need to be willing to have people at our table that don't act, look, and think like us. And that's one thing I think I learned. And again, I want to honor the rock, honor this church and what it is. One thing I've learned here is that the table is just as important as the temple. And here's what I mean by that temple is this place where we're all gathered and it's awesome. And you have your friends sitting next to you. How many of you have a friend sitting next to you? Okay. How many of you have an enemy sitting next to you? So we're all here. We're gathered and it's awesome. And, but one thing I learned at The Rock is after I got encountered at an amazing camp in 2010, uh, I got invited into Pastor Brandon's living room with a bunch of smelly, sweaty teenagers. Okay. And, and uh, there's some teenagers here today. And I just want to honor you guys. You guys are no longer smelly or sweaty. You have Instagram to teach you how to dress. All we had was our mirrors. We were awful at everything. And so we're gross and we're crammed in a living room and we're eating food. But, but here's, here's how I describe that season of my life is I met Jesus at the temple, but I learned how to follow him at a table. And there's a call of God on the Rock of Roseville to be a place of open tables. Even of families, I would say families, your first job is to disciple your kids who are at your table. But there's also a second job you have of there's uh, spiritual orphans in the family of God that need a seat at a table to learn how to follow Jesus in that context. Are you willing to step out of the comfort zone of people who are safe and comfortable for you? And then the third comfort zone, Acts chapter 2, verse 17 says this, In the last days, uh, it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. How many of you are a son? Any sons out there? Any, any daughters? Okay, then it says your young men shall see visions. Any young men out there? Uh, and your old men shall dream dreams. Any old men out there? Okay, thank you for your honesty there. Everybody gets, a, so, so Peter stands up and says, hey, what's going on right now? The Holy Spirit being poured out. Joel, the prophet, actually talked about this. 
He said that it would happen, and he said that when it would happen, and it's happening right now, the Holy Spirit is not getting poured out on just one particular type of person. He's getting poured out on all different types of people, the young men, the old men, all people. And this is a significant moment in the story of God where the mission of God changes from just being to the Jewish people in Israel to all the nations of the earth. And what we see is this moment catapults those early disciples to go from Jerusalem to Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. The third comfort zone that we need to learn to step out of is the comfort zone of place. The comfort zone of place. And sometimes Jesus calls us to step out of the comfortable place of our house and actually talk to the people that live in the door next to us. Uh, Sometimes Jesus calls us out of the comfort zone of our office cubicle and into the cubicle of the person next to us with gloves and masks on, of course, to love in a different way. Uh, But Jesus calls us out of the comfort zone of place. And and here's what I want to say about that. So Ronald Warheiser, an amazing author that I love, says this. He says, the Holy Spirit is not a general spirit. He's a particular spirit given to particular people for a particular purpose. And so here's what I want to say. If you have said yes to Jesus, you actually have a deposit of God himself inside of you, but not just this general vanilla deposit of God. You actually have a specific deposit from God that the world needs, but the only way the world's going to get it is if we're able to step out of our comfort zone of place. It's kind of like the best illustration I can think of is, has anyone ever had store-bought bread before and eaten it? You like store-bought bread? Uh, versus like homemade, hands needed bakery bread. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? I think I've shared this as an illustration before. I just love bread. Anyone else love bread? So homemade bread. Uh, Morgan and I have thrown away so many loaves of store-bought bread. Why? Because it's cookie cutter and kind of gross and it's cheap, so it's nice. I have never thrown away a loaf of bakery hand needed bread. I will cut off the mold and eat it and get sick if I need to. It's so good. Because here's what I want to say. You are a handmade loaf, not a store-bought loaf, okay? You aren't just put in a manufacturing plant and then shipped as a carbon copy. God actually made you with his hands in a unique way, uh, and God put a unique deposit of his spirit into you that the world needs. Will you step out of your comfort zone? And one thing I've learned at The Rock ever since I was 16 and went on a mission trip to Nicaragua with Pastor Bob and was like, man, this guy talks about missions a lot. And then uh, learned a heart for the nations. And how many of you have been on a mission trip with Pastor Bob? You've been on a mission trip with Pastor Bob. I think um, I love The Rock's heart for missions. If there's anything I've learned here is that God is still sending out everyday missionaries to our neighborhoods and to the nations of the earth. Will you step out of a comfort zone this morning. All right, friends, can I pray for you, church? And then I know you're going to pray for me. So uh, let's do this. If you'll, if I'm going to pray for you, and then you can pray for me. Does that sound good? Unless you don't want to, that's fine too. I mean, we're totally fine. Morgan and I are chill. Okay, I'm going to pray for you. Why don't you close your eyes? Thank you, Lord, for your grace, for your presence. If you can, I just want to take a moment to respond to the Holy Spirit. If you want to put your hands out, like you're going to receive a gift or put your hands on your heart, I want to pray. I kind of felt a couple specific things that I want to pray for this morning. Uh, Number one is this, if you've been in a season of waiting and you need a suddenly of God to break in and speak to you this morning, just with eyes closed, if you've been waiting on an answer from God, I just want to pray for you. Only God can do it, but I want to pray. If you, just eyes closed, can you just slip your hand up? If that's you, God, I pray for every heart that's waiting for an answer for you this morning, for in the in-between of what's my next step. Lord, I pray for your clarity this morning to step out of a comfort zone and go. The number two thing I want to pray for is, uh, is I feel like there's two things, two things related to this idea of table. Um, is I feel like there's, there's some people here where God's calling you, obviously, in a, in a safe way uh, to open up your table in an increased way and make some space for different types of people in your life. Just with eyes closed, anyone sensing that tug on their heart to open up their table 
in an increased way. Lord, we pray for the birth of community groups in this church, the multiplication of places to belong, spaces to belong. Um, But number two thing on that I want to pray for is this. If you're in this place and you're saying, you know what, I need a table. I feel alone and I need a family to belong to. Just with eyes closed, can you slip your hand up if that's you? God, I just pray for every hand that's raised for loneliness to be broken by the power of the cross. God, for you to bring the right people at the right time, just like Kathy and Alex came to Morgan and I at the right time. Lord, we pray for the right people at the right time. And then last thing, can I pray for one more thing? I know that's four. You should probably only do three, but hey, one thing I love about the rock is we're not afraid of prayer. Okay, we're going to pray. I want to pray for a fourth thing, a fourth thing. There's such a sweet presence of the Holy Spirit that's here. I just sense some of you have heard the call to go, uh, and I'm not talking about leaving the rock. I'm just talking about going to the nations or, uh, you know, your neighbors, neighborhoods. You, You feel the call to go, but you're not quite sure where to go. And that's your question of the Lord is, I know I feel sent, but I don't know where. Just with eyes closed, can you slip your hands up? If that's you, God, we pray for clarity of the next and the place in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Thank you, Jesus.